Oh, my love, y you startled me. Yeah, we finished the call about five or ten minutes ago. No, 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 don't come in, don't come in. Uh, well, uh, I was looking at something and I didn't want you to see. Just give me a moment, okay? Sorry, I was, uh, looking at some options for birthday presents for you. Yeah, I, I know your birthday isn't for a while, but I suddenly had a couple ideas, you know, and, uh, and, well, I didn't want the surprise to be ruined by you seeing what was on my screen when you came in or anything. But anyway, what are you up to? Oh, uh, well, I'm done with all my meetings for today. There are a few other things I was hoping to get done tonight that I could work on, but, uh, it's been a long day and, well, they aren't time sensitive, so, yeah, if you're hungry and want to start on dinner, I'll just send these last couple of emails and meet you downstairs in a few minutes, okay? Uh, yeah, it'll be okay. Uh, they don't have to be done until end of day tomorrow. Plus, I'm still waiting for uh, my coworker to send me a detailed report from last week so that I can do the analysis anyways. Uh, well, I thought she did, but turns out that she accidentally sent me the one from two weeks ago instead. And she's not in the domestic office, so by the time I realized she sent the wrong one, she'd already gone home for the night. So she won't be able to get to me until the morning. Yeah, I mean, I've done that plenty of times, so I get it, and... I don't think I'll be able to get any of the other things done, either. So, it just makes sense to do them tomorrow, hmm? Uh, so anyway, I'll just send a couple emails and call it a night, okay? Mm hmm. L what do you mean? Why wouldn't I be okay? Oh, um, I mean, I'm fine. As I said, it's just been a long day, so that's probably why I seem a bit more low energy than usual. Um, I'm not very hungry, but go ahead and make all of it. It keeps well, so we can eat whatever the leftovers are tomorrow and not even have to cook. I, I know we'd both appreciate that, hmm? Uh, you're not gonna let me get away with it, are you? Mm, it's, it's okay, it's not that. I, I can talk about it, but... Was I that obvious? Ugh, my ears are folded over and I'm doing with that thing with my tails, aren't I? Hmm, thanks. Uh, I needed a hug. Sometimes I envy you humans and other kimono nimi. Oh. Uh, nothing. I, I didn't... Uh, nothing's wrong with it, I guess. Just, I don't know. Sometimes it's a bit annoying that you can always read me better than I can read you. Just because us kitsune have more obvious cues like that. Hmm. <laughs> Though, it does feel really nice when you pet me there. <laughs> uh, you know... There are a lot of different types of kimono mimi. Kitsune, of course, but also plenty of others. And there are certain stereotypes about us that persist and become sort of an expectation. For example, it can be different with strays, but domestic nekos are often seen as demure and submissive, or that they like to play with balls of yarn and eat fish and it all becomes part of the way we think about these nekos. 
in relation to the stereotypes, whether that's fair or not. <laughs> right, exactly. There, Of course there are a lot of Nekos that are like that, and that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with being demure or liking fish, but it can be frustrating for the ones who aren't like that. Uh, you're right, and us Kitsune aren't necessarily a directly affected by the Neko stereotypes, though there are certainly some similarities between us. For us... Mm, no, I promise. It's fine. I'm just trying to figure out how to say it. Mm. You know the stories about us Kitsune, right? Most of them are based on true stories, actually, but most of the ones that people around here are familiar with are the ones that are a bit more... folklore. We're not rare, per se, but Kitsune have always been... not too frequent here, and so a lot of stories about us that are known here are Either the stories brought back here after our culture's first contact, or they are genuinely stories from our folklore. Both sets of which are lacking in broad representation and nuance. Mm. Mm hmm. Though they've been embellished over time, of course. Kitsune are considered unique among most kimono mimi for having multiple tails, and many of us do. I mean, well, I have three of them. We're born with one, and any subsequent tail grows in over time, spread out over our long lifespans. And how many we'll end up with, well, it's partially genetic, but there are a bunch of other factors, so, well, we really never know. It's a bit like height in that way. Like, your parents can both be tall, but your... I'm sorry, can you just listen and let me get this all out? Otherwise, I'm not sure I'll be... Thanks. You can keep petting me, though. Yeah, just like that. But long ago, before we understand those complications, uh... Having more tails was seen as a measure of virtue, purity or power, depending on the situation. It was always a mark of honor. So, having more tails, as many as nine, was a sign of being older, being an adult, being an elder in the tribe, with all the wisdom and power that entails, which only served to perpetuate the ideas that more tails meant more important. A lot of people have muddied the historical record by changing accounts or paintings and insisting that many of the major figures in our culture's history have had nine tails. Eight, if they're being conservative about it. So, even though we know now that the number of tails a kitsune has doesn't really matter, and that it's mostly a marker of age, though, again, Many, most, even, Millennium Kitsune only have four or five tails, so it's... Uh, but it's so ingrained in our culture that we can't help to think it's true. And it's not just us, those ideas about us are... pervasive. Where do you think we get phrases like Cloud Nine or Dress to the Nines? Mm, yeah, uh, it, it does makes sense, except for the fact that there's nothing inherently special about the nine-tailed kitsune in that regard. Mm. Oh, oh right. It, it's actually relevant. That video conference meeting I just had, it was me, the rest of my team, and our client and his assistant. We'd seen the initial services request on the paper, but this was our first time talking to him, and this was the first time for getting the details of what the contract would entail. Uh, for context, the client's request is fairly straightforward, uh, the kind of thing we do all the time. 
but he's convinced that it's this huge special thing that no one could possibly ever understand. Much less a three-tailed kitsune like me. I certainly couldn't hope to compete with this five-tailed guy. <sighs> but, but he, like, refused to believe that I was on the team lead, and he would ignore my suggestions until another of my team or his assistant would say the same thing a few minutes later. And at least my team were supportive and would actually say something like, ah, maybe we could do X, Y, Z, like I mentioned earlier. <sighs> Just, I don't know. <sighs> but it's frustrating and humiliating, and to be honest, it's... <sighs> Something I'd always been insecure about since I was, well, not quite a little kid, but since I was pretty small. And I can usually shrug it off when it comes up, but today it was just so consistent and insistent that that had to be deliberate, and I tried to act like it didn't bother me, like I didn't even notice, but it hurt quite a bit, if I'm honest. Yeah. It was pretty rough. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I just went on a ramble about how these expectations and stereotypes are nonsense, but the fact that I know that doesn't mean that my subconscious emotions aren't going to care. Uh, and they did, really. Thanks. You do? You really like my tails. <laughs> I do take care of them. Brushing them every night before bed is super relaxing, but it's always much better when you do it. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Uh, uh, more obvious cues, huh? But, yeah, thank you. Uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, thank you, sweetheart. You're always so nice and gentle and warm. You're always willing to listen when I need to get things off my chest. Even if I tend to be pretty bad about asking you to. I think we both take better care of each other than we do ourselves, huh? Mm-hmm. And I do love you for it, sweetheart. Uh, and for other things, of course, of course. Oh, right, those emails. Um, can we keep sitting like this for another few minutes? You're just so warm and I'm so comfortable in your lap like this. Ah. <sighs>